anyway, like I was saying, we spared no expense to get this guy. We, we flew him in from Aurora and uh, he comes with a great pedigree. Uh, he, he knows his way around the fly fishing industry and fly fishing clubs. Our illustrious president, Mr. Hochhauser, has a very interesting fly. I'm actually really looking forward to tying this. So you're going to be doing some different techniques tonight. So this will be a bit of a challenge. And because there's a lot of information to be shared, he has decided that he's going to tie one in step by step by step, and then we will grab stuff and tie it together. This is so that everybody pays attention. So, mm -hmm. sir, with no further ado, your microphone. Thanks. <clears throat> I brought along some, some tools too that help in this, but Jim Warren shares my interest in these goggles, if you've seen them. They're about 16 bucks on the internet now, and it comes with a box of interchangeable lenses that flip up and down. And it's got a little light in it, LED lights. And it goes on over your glasses. So it's a very cool thing. You, know, you just put them on like this. And when you need them, you can flip them down, turn on the light. And they're, they've got a number of different powers that go with them and they're really powerful. You don't need anything besides those. I was pleasantly surprised to find them and so cheap. So this tie, first and foremost, you need a, a dubbing loop spinner. Did everybody bring one? I've got three extras here. Anybody need one? Okay. You get your choice of this little hand spinner or uh, this one. Okay. Yeah, that works well. Okay. Try that one. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, in in addition to that, I have this uh, little dog brush. And how does that show up on there? Okay. Mm -hmm. At least know what it is, and that works really well for getting the underfur out of this. Uh, artificial, you know, our fancy fur from uh, Joanne's fabric. <laughs> <laughs> but with, with deer hair, this would work just as well, pulling out the under hair. And I find it pretty good. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, my dubbing wax, everybody have some? This is Wonder Wax, but anything will work. The, plot, the fly consists of this uh, 3X long, 1X strong, size 2 hook. It's really heavy in and of itself. And to go along with that, we have about uh, 13 inches of lead wire, and most of that will go on the fly. So that'll give it some weight. And we have little little eyes here. You all have used those before. But they're a pain to get on this that dubbing brush spun fly. I also have various uh, feathers like this uh, hen cake. It's a hen hackle from Hairline. Use these for the tail and the pet coral things, which are exaggerated. Now, this is a uh, Cabela's Hungarian partridge. You can use this stuff too. I got this in one of our grab bags at the auction. And this from Joann's is, uh, if you look at it, it's pretty neat in that it looks like grizzly hacker. But that ends its, uh, positive characteristics. Now I tried this with EP fibers. EP fibers are nice and stiff and straight and they make great uh, um, ropes if, if you tie with wire on that. But what is it called again, Mark? Uh, Bill Shears machine? Oh, yeah. 
this is a dubbing, you make a dubbing brush to this and it works really well. These are SF fibers and you can do the same with these except the ones I was able to find all had the flash in it, the really flashy fibers. And I've been looking locally for about a week and a half to local fly shops and they were just out of any multiple color uh, EP fibers. And what you have to look for are stiff fibers. The fibers in this little mat that you'll be getting a piece of are pretty soft. And as Mark says, sometimes if they're too long, they just turn into a mop when you get some wet. But it will work. So let me get started on one real quick. And I'll show you. <clears throat> the easy way and then use the hard fibers later. I'm starting in with the hook in the vise just a regular way, but once you get this all set up and tied, it's going to ride upside down. So it's hooked point up. And it's supposed to bump along the bottom when you fish it. <clears throat> the pattern I got this from called it a bullhead but it could just as well be a sculpin because it's got those big flaring uh, pectoral fins and, and big tail kind of flat head. So the first thing you do with this is put the wire in. And when you start the wire, you start lining about the hook point here. And I don't put down any base of uh, thread or anything when I start this. And after about this many turns, I think the wire is pretty well locked on. So you can use your rotary vice function or just wind it on. But you're going to go all the way to the hook eye and just leave a, a hook, hook eye gap at the front. And this, I won't use my rotary, but it's so much easier doing the rotary on this one. Um, I, I don't think so. I've got three of them up here. They're, they're kind of heavy. I mean, this is, you have a, in the patterns, there's either a 25 thousandths lead or a 20 thousandths lead. But you could tie this with 30 thousandths if the water was fast, and that would get you in the back of the hip. Too. Once you get to the front, like this, with that gap and start back. And when you go back, go about a third of the way back. So it, it looks like it's heavy when you're starting out here. And this thing about having to put wraps on it to hold it down. I couldn't twist this if I tried. It's not moving anywhere. Next up is a tail. And uh, you have these, this, this cartridge, so that's what I'll use. And I'll just reach in and I'll just pull a handful of these partridge feathers off like this. And that's, you only need four for this pattern. So I pulled off a lot more than I need. And I'm going to strip this feather down, pulling off the fluffies and what I don't need. And to make this easier to handle than doing the tail, you know, some more here. I take Sally Hansen's and I just put 
paint a few on one side of it, the other, and then just pull it like this. And it pulls it together and it won't come apart on you when you're tying it in. It keeps it shape of the shape of the tail. Some of the pictures I saw of this fly that had been used, I mean, the, the, the tail was going every which way. They were just, you know, loose, loose feather. I suppose they make other, nat, not natural materials, but uh, tails that you could use on this too to make it easy. And I would see nothing wrong with that. This will work. I even forgot what Sally Hansen smelled like. Though. Pretty cold. Yeah. Yep. That's going to work too good. That's going to be a fairly small tail, but that's the way you do it. I and mean, you just put these things face to face. And we use two feathers, I think, because it just makes it a bit stiffer. Aren't even the same perfect size, but if you just try to keep them on top of the hook, it could work. I'm just using some rust colored thread here. Once again, trying to make, manipulate two feathers and get them lined up with all these This will make just a little thicker tail. Do a loose wrap on the top so we don't twist around the hook. And you wrap, wrap them down on top or the side. They split here and they're coming apart. So what I'll do at the end of the tie is just take some more Sally Hansons and glue them back together. <clears throat> and at this point, <clears throat> you're already into the, uh, the dubbing loop. The way I do it is I pull out a lot of thread. Much of my stomach will let me. You take it forward and go over the top once. And then just around the loop a couple of times and wrap forward, get your thread all the way. Now, so this thing doesn't collapse on you. I always stick my uh, twister in next and just let it hang. Now you can take you can take the hair off this like you would cutting deer hair. You know, lift the a length of it and just snip it off close, and you'll immediately no, notice how much blood this stuff has. Those underfoot. So I've taken this clump off. You can see how big and thick it is at the bottom. I grab just the top fibers, hold it real tight, and pick up this dog brush and hit it. Look what's left on the dog brush. Just a lot of fibers. Also, when I do that, I, I, I'm going to shorten and even up these end fibers. So when I stick this in, stick this in the loop, this will go in first, and it'll be uh, not symmetrical. Just a little, little more than a half an inch, maybe, and and that's it. <laughs> and adjust it, spread it out a little bit. If they're too clumped together, it'll clump when you spin it. And I probably want twice as much as that or more in this loop. I 
Once again, it looks like I took way too much once I hit it with a dog pin. You see how, how much already the dog pin was pulled out of that thing. And then I, you can keep pulling with your fingers and that'll take it out too. I'm gonna trim this up. Stick it in the loop and spread it out. When I first learned how to do this, every time I tried to straighten this stuff in the loop, I give it a little tug and it all come out. And I'm doubly lucky here because I forgot to wax my thread. Well, you guys saw that, so. Now, when I start to spin it with the thread hanging over my finger like this, Nothing's going to happen. Just keep spinning it and getting a good twist in the line and it, and it stops right at my finger. and doesn't run up the line into the uh, thread. Once I get a good spin on it like that, I lift some of the pressure on my finger and this loop will start to spin. And as it starts to spin, I'm spinning it up more than this. This is not like deer hair spinning or EP fiber spinning. This stuff will tangle up. You can get all weird on you, but this one doesn't look too bad. How does that show up on the camera from back there? Can you see the, the loop up there? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the hook, pulling the fibers to the rear each, each wrap, and uh, trying to keep from sticking myself on the hook eye or the hook point that's really sharp. So I'm going to try to see how close I can get to that one third wrap of. Uh, the wire. And that is the non toxic stuff, non lead. As you're going out up on this thing, if you had a little comb or brush with you, I don't use it here. You each, each wrap, each time you go over, you can kind of brush it out. And you see, I keep twisting this stuff back because unlike a, a wire dubbing rope, this stuff wants to untwist itself. See that? And I might not make it all the way up there with this, but you, know, you just always bite the bullet and do another loop. Assuming you could do a wire dubbing loop. Make it a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, watching Bill Shear use that machine of his to make the loops in the first place. And then you know, taking his instruction and learning how to wrap them. It's so much easier than this. I saw it, I said, well, the first time you do something, do it by the formula and see how. It goes, and if I were to tie up a mess of these things, the next time I get up my little get out my little Bill Shear machine and tie up a bunch of uh, wire dubbing loops. I just came back from up there. He modified it slightly. Bigger table, uh, all uh, laser mm -hmm. printed. Okay. Now, I think that's pretty darn good because it looks symmetrical. 
And it's really hard to keep this stuff inside the W. It is really slick. I'm not, I'm going to go and make another small loop and put a little more on. And remember to wax my thread and stuff. And the waxing really helps as you're setting the, the dubbing loop up to twist. Because uh, as you try to adjust this material, it doesn't slide around it. <laughs> you know, sitting up here sometimes you think, well, these guys got things to do, so I better hurry this up and get it done. But the truth of the matter is, I'd rather the guy up here take his time and tell me a little bit about what's going on and give me time to catch up when I'm trying to do it. Okay. And I didn't use too much. And Wipe some of it out. There it is. We get the doggy brush. This may be almost enough. Oh, and with respect to scissors. This little scissors has one blade serrated. So when you go to cut this slippery stuff, it doesn't slide out of the way of the scissors. It's really nice. Okay, back in the loop. I don't know, that may be almost enough. Finish this out. Still not, materials not turning. I always thought this is 6 0 thread. If I spin this too much, I'm going to break the thread, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. Oh, did you see that too? As when I go like this, watch it wind up even more. You're sliding your fingers up. There's a Davy Watton trick. Trick from, trick from some time ago. And this, this artificial stuff just goes everywhere. So the thing I didn't do on the first time because I wasn't paying attention is that once you get to this point, you should trim it the shape because it makes it a lot easier putting on those pectoral fin feathers. And remember, this is the bottom of the fly. So when I start to trim it, I just take it the bottom almost on flat. So that should work. Remember, once you take it off, you can't put it back. It go slow. And also, I tried to make it too flat the first time I did this, and uh, cut my thread from the government. This one, you want to uh, start high and go low toward the back. 
try to give it a taper. And it takes a while to do this. And I just don't think this, this artificial stuff trims as nicely. Now I'm going to try, just try to, you know, it's coming on. Oop. Do a tapered side as well. I think that's, a, you can stop about there now and put the pectorals on. And once again, I do the same thing. I take the Sally Hansen's and put it up a little bit. Jeans are good for something. My wife is saying, but those jeans have holes in them. I said, I know, they're just getting comfortable. This one is pretty much dry, so I'll put it on first. And just like the other materials, you don't want this to uh, roll around on the fly once you put it down. So start out with a loose wrap. And I'm making this pectoral pretty big so it will stick out. Yeah, but I'm, I'm taking it. Well, I, I just started in there, and that's where the thread was. But I'm taking the thread to the rear now. And the first out, if you can get them to. There we go. They don't look stay looking nice for very long. When you get them on, can you just do it one more dubbing loop to get finished up to the front? What would work better yeah. would be the right color of an EP fiber without the flash in it. So I would get a couple of darker browns or a black, which would look like a stud. So yeah, mix it. Yeah, mix it. Or a uh, black with a with a dark light gray and mix those together and it'd be like a blue, blue gill. Mm -hmm. But I think this guy was European and some of the blue gills they have over there are have a lot of brown tints, light and dark color. But I don't know of any blue gills, I mean not blue gills. Um, bull heads around here that I've seen that look like that. Usually a, some tint of a dark gray or black. Mm -hmm. Right. I won't forget the wax. Does that sound too loud when I drop that on the table with the microphone? Because of my hearing. Yeah, I like it. I won't get
and give me some funny stuff. My wife was laughing at me. She said, well, how long did it take you to get up to the cutting table? Because he goes there all the time. Not fun. People are all nice when they get there. It just takes the time long. I was talking to Mark about this. And we agreed that. You can get this really cheap at Joanne's, but the quality of the fur they have there is not nearly, you can get at a good price shop if you really pay for it there compared to Joanne's. Can you just use craft fur? Well, that's what this is. Oh, okay. This is craft fur. It's got a lot of under fur, and for some applications, this will be fine, but for this, it's maybe a little too wimpy. You know, but I, I found some other that were really soft. It's just too soft to use. Okay, there we are. I might need another spin on this one. Once again, you spin it up a lot, and you'll notice that the material is not moving. And then once you move your hand or finger a little bit, there it goes. And I'm helping it spin and kind of unstick from its neighboring fibers. Let's see how this is going on. I forgot them at home, but what I was doing is, once I had this wound up like that, I was putting a uh, <clears throat> ankle holder here and cutting this thing off and then holding the ankle holder tight and then this didn't unwind at all when you were out of it. And it's almost right up to the eye like that. Don't really tie it off. And that second uh, distance you have to wrap there is such that uh, you know that size of pick did it all with a little bit left over. There it is, and it's uh, ready for trimming. You know, the top's the bottom. Yeah. Yep. And flip it over. I guess I'm not as artistic as some I always 
or having trouble doing this and making it look nice. Now this is the top. So I'm going to come up and try to put a little size to the head in the front. Try to make it a flat head. It's getting there, and you see what I mean. It's got the big fins, and I'll glue these things down, and they'll stay together. That's it. And after this, we'll just put on those uh, little eyes. The little eyes weren't showing up very well in the in the film, but they're they're stuck there and I put them on with uh, super glue and then I covered them with a little clear UV. So, cast these out and give everybody a chance. Look at all the fun. Ah. Actually, I, I need to stretch or I won't be able to stand up at the end. I'll tell you something I'm going to tell the next flyers, tires, I mean. I brought some masking tape. And once I got my vice situated where I wanted it to tie here, I put a little tape square here. So. So I accidentally bump into moving around and there's no, no struggle with keeping the camera focused. Just set the device back down in a little, little spot. Yeah, there's more than enough of those things. I'll try with one of these kits here to see how that goes. And your vice just goes in, the hook just goes in the regular way and the vice to start. No, uh, Yep, it is. And it's very sharp. I, I can't tell you how many times I poke myself, you know, brushing the hair back on the dubbing loop as I was wrapping it. But I think inflation has come to us. I, uh, I used a spool of a uh, 25,000 lead that start making the kits. And uh, I measured it as I took it off and it had about 18 or 20 feet of uh, lead substitute on it. Then I bought a couple of uh, spools of lead with white tail. And then those spools only had six feet of lead on it. And they were the same price as that whole spool. Old school.
Oh, and the nice thing about tying with the EP fiber or this uh, SF stuff is that there's no real under fiber to pull out of it. You can do it that way, or, or just when you cut it off. Oh, yeah, just come to it. Good. That's why my hearing aids make every, I got them turned up in here so I can hear everybody. Boy, every little sound is so magnified. Minor to the point where they magnify the stuff that go on in here. <laughs> there you go. Cars going by, people talking, I still can't hear them. Anybody missing anything in their material bag? That was all. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Anybody having trouble getting this uh, stuff to come off? The uh, fibers to the No, none at all. It's very slim. And you know, something else this time tonight has reminded me that a tire like me should be more careful in telling everybody all the tools they use and not assuming. Everyone has it. One good thing about this meeting tonight, having to wear a mask, is I'm not breathing in so much of the fiber. Oh man, I was sneezing like crazy when I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that begs the question, how much does a bucket of warm spit cost?
I'll tell you, every each time I make another loop of this fiber, the loop seems to be better than the last one, too. Huh? <laughs> I mean, the first one I tied looked off.